Hello, crypto boys and ghouls, and welcome back to the channel, Tales from the Cryptmancer, where we feature content on play and earn games on the blockchain, such as Splinterlands. And in today's video, we have a special guest returning to the channel, Max Power in the house, representing Archmage. Max, how you doing? I am doing fantastic as always. Excited to be here. Excited to be talking to folks about uh, this wonderful game that we play and, uh, you know, the service that we uh, that we put out for it through uh, Archmage. So, yeah. Well, certainly. Well, I, I hear rumors that there are some changes to the Archmage service that we probably want to talk about today. But before we hop into that, I mean, there's been no shortage of, let's say, conversation in the community and in the Mav chat and just everywhere about bots in general, bots in tournaments, bots in brawls, bots in the leaderboard, bots, bots, bots. So with that being said, is there any any specific like um, comments that you have as, as Archmage looks at the landscape? Has anything changed from that perspective on the project side? And, and I guess how, how have your conversation has been going on those topics? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I'd say one of the, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the biggest things is in, in, a, in a world of gaming, uh, so far, I think nearly every game has a very strong and very clear stance uh, against botting and automation, right? Like that's a, that's a pretty uh, standard thing in most games. And so uh, what I find interesting is uh, like th this is one of the few games that I have ever uh, been a part of and heard the founders talk about uh, essentially saying, uh, yeah, we're kind of bot agnostic, right? Like we, uh, we, we're, we're like, we believe that our job is to set this up so that the, uh, that there, there, there is no advantage to bots, uh, and that humans, uh, and bots could essentially play together, but they're, they're, they're not, they're not trying to, uh, go and, uh, uh, police botting kind of in the same top down approach that we see in, uh, in other things. And that, and that I mean, that very, very much rings true to, to sort of the uh, you know the crypto ethos uh, that this uh, that this game comes out of and and that as a uh, as a concept is honestly it's been uh, something that's always excited me uh, you know regardless of the uh, you know the you know the connection to Archmage and and all of that I I I've just found it really interesting that uh, there's this cool concept of saying you know what can we do uh, to create uh, you know create a game create an ecosystem where uh, where the system itself, where essentially the truth in code is set up to align incentives the way that we want them to happen, rather than uh, trying to have like a, a top-down uh, approach on on how to uh, enforce it. And uh, I, I I love that idea. I love that concept. Uh, I think we are still very much in uh, you know a, a, a beginning discovery phase with it, right? And I I don't know for sure. Uh, like I I've always talked about this. I don't know for sure if. Uh, uh, if the path and direction, uh, if it if it'll work out well or not, I don't know because we're really in uh, uncharted waters, kind of doing some some new things. I do have a, a lot of hope uh, that there's uh, that there there's some things at play in the uh, Splinterlands ecosystem that aren't at play uh, in other places. One of them specifically being uh, most games don't have a uh, clear, direct, and integrated way to earn through playing, uh, whereas Splinterlands does and I have seen that, you know, in general, I, I you know, I believe that Splinterlands, Splinterlands assets are essentially uh, valued in so much as people want them, right? Uh, and so the question of if they retain their value uh, has a lot to do with, you know, not just the tokenomics, but uh, are there humans out there who uh, who want these assets? And uh, while there is an argument to be made that if, you know, the game is entirely bots and whatnot, that, uh, uh, that, that could devalue assets for sure. Uh, I also see that... Uh, uh, there are plenty of humans in our world uh, that day after day go and spend their money, uh, put lots of money in, in some cases, into playing things against bots and automation, right? Uh, especially when there's an opportunity to, to earn, uh, Vegas being one of the big ones that I've seen. So uh, in the overall landscape, my, my basic idea is I, I like the the concept and the philosophy you know philosophy that the uh, Splinterlands team has put out in terms of you know uh, having that sort of 
decentralized approach. I, I like the idea of that. And, and uh, as a result, I think it's cool to say like, hey, like, like there's some benefits to being able to leverage automation to, uh, you know, equip players, especially to uh, make sure that their assets are going to work for them, uh, even if you get too busy, even if you uh, don't have a ton of time. Uh, and really, as a project, we find ourselves geared toward uh, toward those kinds of players, right? We want we want to connect with and enable uh, real players who love this game uh, and want to play it uh, and enjoy playing it, uh, but just like everybody, often find themselves you know too busy to play it and uh, and yet still want to make sure that 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 they're getting as much value as they can, even when they're not playing, so that in those times when they are playing, uh, that their you know their assets have gone to work and. Uh, uh, earned them some cards, earned them some SPS, earned them some rewards, uh, even even when they've had to be idle themselves. So uh, that that's kind of the overall idea. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. It's a little bit of a, a little bit of a monologue there. Sorry for that, but, uh, but yeah. No, it's it's excellent. I, I never thought I would you know hear a comparison of Splinterlands to you know um, casinos being the house and um, you know slot machines. So we got one there, and it's actually an interesting analogy. Um, if you kind of uh, think about it. So that's interesting. Um, I am curious because I know you mentioned that, you know, Agrode and, and the team for Smithlands has said that, you know, they're they're bot neutral and, you know, are okay with bots in the ecosystem as long as they don't have an advantage over humans. Uh, what's interesting is I think we we have different types of bots, as you alluded to. There's bot farms. That's kind of a multitude of bots, like thousands, sometimes tens of thousands of bots working in unison. And then you have uh, services like automation services like Archmage and other of your competitors out there. I think it's Splintermate, XBot, and others um, uh, doing, as you mentioned, like freeing up time and providing a an alternative to renting, for example, or maintaining or maximizing ECR. You know, what we see in both of those examples, you know, on one hand, you've got bot farms that we've recently showed some data around this, this past week where we have one of the largest bot farms out there having almost 7 million BCX of reward cards on their account. Uh, extracting 420,000 SPS from the ecosystem last month, which is about $17,000 in SPS. And we've got, you know, um, literally uh, more cards than any other account in the game owned by bots in this bot farm. So that's one example maybe of um, bots having a significant advantage over humans. Um, that's, you know, against what the the founders have, um, looked for. And then you have in other instances, examples, or at least rumors of bots in tournaments dominating tournament winnings um, time after time and uh, essentially soaking up rewards there, not based on skill, but just basically access to a premium bot. So with those kind of two ends of the spectrum out there, um, can, can Splinterlands maintain bot neutrality the stance of we're not making a decision one way or the other we're just going to turn a blind eye to the issue and have these kind of um economic let's say challenges out there and can the game survive a, a neutral stance here kind of like a switzerland stance around bots or automation yeah and i i don't know if i'd even call it a uh a neutral stance exactly like they're they're not they they, they have made their stance fairly clear in the sense of uh, it's not like they're saying, "Hey, we don't, uh, we don't care about uh, about if bots exist." Period. Uh, what they what they've said is they said that they they want to to work the system uh, in order to set the incentives to incentivize uh, a number of things. So to incentivize that uh, bots do not have an advantage that a human cannot have. Right. So there's there's that aspect. So they're they're they've done a number of things to to work to enact that. Uh, the other, some of the other things that they've mentioned, they they want to incentivize that the that that the uh, uh, the best ways to earn in this in this game are to uh, have fewer accounts with assets consolidated within them, right? So they want to incentivize that, uh, and I, I feel like I'm, I'm I might be missing a, another one or two, but uh, and and what I would say is, uh, it is not like they're doing nothing. Right. So, uh, I, you know, I shared uh, with you a, a, a while back, I wrote an article about uh, some of the specific uh, specific effects in terms of 
uh, you know, ratings inflation uh, and what 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 measurable changes that happened as a result of specific uh, you know specific changes that the that the team put in place uh, to you know Im- improve the the things in favor of uh, of a human uh, compared to a bot. Uh, and so, like some of those things, you know, there's the there's the starter card uh, penalty where if you use starter cards, uh, then then you know that lowers your reward. So we saw a number of accounts go out buy a bunch of cards uh, and consolidate them into fewer accounts so that uh, they could earn from that. We uh, we saw the uh, uh, 50% ECR uh, penalty go into play, and we saw drastically uh, less accounts playing, less battles happening as a result of that as well. Uh, and, and so we we have seen oh and then you know most recently I haven't uh, I haven't seen the impact yet or I, I haven't done the research yet on uh, on the number of battles and and the impact that it's made, uh, but the uh, you know the the recent levels uh, levels implementation where uh, earning at uh, higher leagues with lower levels uh, you know there's a, there's a disincentive to uh, to that so there's an incentive to uh, combine cards level up your cards and again that. That goes toward, uh, you know, more cards in in fewer accounts uh, combined and leveled and, and whatnot. And that, that's that's the incentive that I was missing is that that they uh, that the incentive should be uh, to uh, level your deck, right? Um, and so I I don't see it as uh, as being like turning a blind eye. I don't see it as them doing nothing. I see uh, I see that it is uh, it's a again it's a it's a situation, uh, a circumstance that they they are trying to solve in a very specific way. That they have made very clear, this is the way you know that we like th- these are these are the tools that we allow ourselves uh, to do to try and solve this. Uh, and uh, and they are they are they are trying. And and you may be right. I I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, or, or you know, I don't know if you're specifically leaning this way or not. But uh, uh, it, it may or may not end up being you know may may or may not end up being enough uh yet one thing i could say for sure <laughs> they have they have been very clear uh they have been very consistent and so you know th- those of us that are in this world especially uh deciding do we want to invest more uh do we want to continue in this game do we want to sell off our assets i mean those are all all options available to us right uh and as a result they they are saying you know they're 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 essentially in the control here of of a lot of these decisions and they're saying where they want to go and so i think as a community uh you know if we don't believe in it or if we if we don't uh want to go down that path with them uh the options avail- available to us are you know to to exit and uh i, I you know to be clear there it, there is also completely the option of uh voicing opinions and and trying to sway and and change that decision uh for sure like that's a that is a completely valid uh way to try and influence the situation here as well uh but i would just say it's like i don't know at, at some point um you know when when people tell you this is what i'm gonna do and why and how and when they show that they do that continually right like this is how they're gonna behave uh you can't be can't be too caught off guard when they do it <laughs> you know right it's uh, uh it's it's pretty consistent with uh with what we expect uh in there and so it, it, in terms of uh you know the future and what it holds again i i don't know exactly uh you know it, it, exactly where it all ends up i uh, i can i can i can see there being uh being a future where uh it's it's unsustainable uh that uh, uh that the level of of bot play uh, is too discouraging to humans i could see that i could see that happening uh at the same time i can also see it happening that we have a a cool interesting thing here where there's uh, where there is real ownership and there is the ability to play a game in order to earn things that have value, which is kind of just interesting. Uh, and, and again, like I said, there are plenty of uh, circumstances where where people uh, invest money into worse odds uh, that they have less control over. And again, you know, Vegas is the example to me on that. Uh, and yet they do so. And whole industries are built off of that. So when we're looking at you know Splinterlands which is a which is a game that even even in the face of bots bots are beatable right it, you can you know the, the the game of Splinterlands is essentially a very complicated game of uh, of of like rock paper scissors <laughs> <laughs> uh, with a with a whole number of dynamics there, but uh, th- so there is no one winning hand, and there is no uh, one way to win. So you you can strategically beat uh, 
beat bots, and because of the number of the uh, the changes that they've made, uh, you know, bots really don't have much more of an advantage aside from they're able to keep playing each day at a consistent rate. Uh, but the rate that they're able to play is within human ability, if that makes sense. Uh, you know, you you you're not really gaining much uh, by playing you know 40 to 50 games a day. Uh, in in so much of a way that a human can't do. So uh, I, I I don't know for sure. Uh, I I see I see things uh, I see things potentially both ways. But what I can say is again for me philosophically, I like the idea of of taking the leap into something new, of of going down that path and seeing can we make this work? Can we figure out a way where we can create this cool ecosystem? That doesn't require, uh, you know, top-down uh, enforcement in order to get a result that the community is in favor of. And I think it's something that we do have to chip away at, uh, change by change by change at a time. I think people often get impatient at those kinds of changes and want it to be an overnight thing where it's just like, I don't like this, so change it right now. Uh, I think people believe that's often a solution, and more often than not, I find those kinds of sweeping changes just cause different consequences that you weren't expecting. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, so I don't know. I, I, I am, uh, I am, uh, I guess, uh, content, uh, to, uh, kind of go on the journey, if that makes sense. And, uh, uh, I think there's a lot of, a lot of cool benefits, uh, technologically, uh, if, if the team is able to figure it out. And if we, as a community kind of help along that path as well to say, Hey, how, how do we set up these, these incentives? How do we set this up so that, uh, it's a, it's a great fair system for, uh, for everybody where, we can deal with uh, kind of this concept of bots and automation uh, in a in a realistic way that uh, uh, that 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 is more truth in code rather than you know having to rely on the goodwill of people, which as we've seen pretty consistently uh, is not something that you can often rely on at scale. So that that's a that's kind of my thoughts there. You know, we heard Matt two town halls ago talk about the idea of, of soulbound reward cards being the next possible iteration on you know, essentially combating some of the negative effects of, of bot farmers specifically. Um, right. So at that point in time, you know, if we take reward cards out as a way to earn in the game and we have merits and potions um, in there as well, um, the only thing left to earn in Splinterlands will be SPS. So it's interesting um, how we have a a stance that, as you mentioned, could be seen as, you know, we're trying to, you know, keep bots in a, um, in a state of neutrality or, or no, no advantage yet because of that, we're going to change the game fundamentally, not only from a user experience perspective, potentially, um, because we don't have all the details of soulbound reward cards as a concept. We don't know if it's, um, 100% or if it's partial or, or what it looks like necessarily yet. We just have the idea or the, the concept right now. We don't know how to be implemented by the team potentially. But if they go down that route, you know, bots could essentially forever change the play and earn component of Splinterlands. And I would say arguably it would be for the worse because if we're on the blockchain and we're using... Um, NFTs that we're supposed to own and have control over, um, you know, are we going potentially in the wrong direction? And and you don't have to answer that. It's just more of a you know a statement just to wonder because, you know, um, I'm, it, it's it's hard to say. Like you say, we're we're in an interesting time in an interesting spot with Splinterlands where you know decisions are being made and it could affect you know the the future uh, of this game uh, quite heavily. So. Right. Yeah. And and honestly, I think uh, uh, the the idea to me of uh, of, of soulbound rewards cards uh, there, there's there's a lot of interesting things there. So uh, it definitely it like definitely removes basically uh, you know, depending on the accounts uh, the 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 math when I've ran it, uh, it easily fifty uh, percent of the of the you know potential revenue like overnight. Right. So it it. Uh, uh, it would uh, d drastically make a make a bot farm, uh, uns you know, uh, less sustainable. I you know I, I don't know exactly how the uh, how the math would work out. Um, 
I, I think there are I think there are some ways that the uh, the team could implement that in a way that. Uh, kind of can have some level of its cake uh, while eating it too. Uh, I, the the idea that I thought about that I feel like would have a, a an impact of uh, hampering a bot farm while still giving uh, giving players a you know sellable asset. You know they talked about the idea of you know when when Matt brought out up the uh, the soulbound rewards. He said uh, essentially what we want is we want we want players to play the game to uh to be encouraged to invest to be encouraged to play the game for sake of the game for sake of the fun right and then after uh investing for for time for you know for for the fun of it they can look back and see oh look at the value that i've built uh through this right and, and the example that he gave was uh you know investing in magic the gathering and like buying packs in order to put together your deck for that and then you know after a while you see that yes i've ended up with uh, through that in investment in in you know Magic the Gathering packs, I've ended up with uh, uh, some valuable cards that I I, I now could uh, capitalize on, right? And so in that same vein, I like the idea of potentially uh, having rewards cards be uh, be soul bound for a time and like a long amount of time, maybe like a year or something, right? Where where the idea is uh, if if you are trying to run an option or uh, an option an operation where uh where where you're looking to be profitable you you essentially have to be able to at least get through a year uh a year's worth of runway before you're able to capitalize on what you did and there will be some you know people some things that that could do that uh but uh, I think that that amount of time makes it drastically less uh, less doable for most most people, right? And and it could even be longer, right? It could be uh, could be two years or something, right? Uh, but what you what you do when you do that uh, is you you kind of get both worlds, right? Where you get to say, okay, well, hey, the incentive is that you're really the primary thing is that you're earning this in order uh, to be able to play the game and play the game at a higher level and have some exclusivity there. Uh, but down the road, you can, uh, you know, you can, you could potentially sell it. I, I like that idea. That hasn't been uh, uh, specifically talked about as, as being the solution, but I, I, I see that as being a, a possible solution to, uh, you know, to both ideas where uh, if, if the goal is to earn immediately, then yes, it does hamper that. But if the goal is to say, Hey, you can earn assets that have value, uh, you know, as, as long as you stay, uh, you know, it, uh, essentially stay in the community and, and, and stick around for long enough and, and all of that. Um, the other thing is that, uh, that we are, we are essentially shifting, uh, shifting what parts of the value are being generated, right? So if there's soul best down, it starts to make uh, Splinterlands accounts themselves their own NFT, right? Uh, so uh, essentially a, a, an NFT that uh, like your wallet itself is an NFT. And uh, because of the way the Hive ecosystem works, that's actually a very uh, potentially doable thing, right? You can, uh, you can uh, uh, reset uh, the, you know, the, the, the passwords on an account and whatnot and, and can make, make something like that work. I, I, there might, there might be some uh, considerations there. I'm, I'm not fully considering. So, you know, uh, you, that may not be the best solution. I don't know, but uh, but there is something to be said that like you you even if it is fully soul bound, uh, you are still building value. You're just building value that is uh, less uh, you know l less liquid than a a you know a very uh, very small uh, divisible you know NFT kind of concept, right? <laughs> but. Uh, uh, but it is still, you know, giving giving value to something that would be sellable, that would be tradable, uh, that you're building up over time. It's just kind of like a a, a monster NFT. I, I kind of think of it like, you know, we got uh, we got the Roonies, right? And and with the uh, uh, with the with the with the process that they're that they're looking at for how you can uh, I, I forget what, what what's the word that they that they described it is you know the blending or the uh, what, what what do they call it for how they're going to do the co the combining process? Rooney reconstruction. Reconstruction, that's the word. Okay, so yeah, so the Rooney reconstruction, uh, essentially like the idea there is that you're, you're sort of taking these separate assets and, and you know, uh, kind of merging them together uh, into one super asset, right? And, uh, and then the value, therefore, of it is, uh, uh, is changed in the process. Uh, you know, theoretically, uh, Soulbound Rewards cards can have the same kind of effect on an account itself, right? So if somebody really wanted to exit uh, and they had spent... Uh, a bunch of time building up their account. They have a bunch of, uh, you know, a uh, bunch of gladiator cards. 
they have a bunch of uh, uh, Soulbound rewards cards, and and maybe there's other Soulbound assets in the future. Who knows? Uh, but if they say they have a bunch of those things, well, that account itself has value uh, just for the things that are locked to it. So that that is a potentially sellable thing, if that makes sense. Sure. I'm curious when we talk about Soulbound reward cards, the concept and ideas to essentially, you know, make the implementation smooth and splinter lands. I'm curious, have you have you played the uh, other blockchain game, Gods Unchained, by any uh, chance? I have, I, ha I have not. I have heard a bit about it. Uh, one of our uh, one of our developers, uh, Melon, has talked a bit about uh, a bit about it. But uh, but elaborate. Why, why do you bring up Gods Unchained? Well, because they have an interesting concept in the game called the Forge, which allows you to take essentially soulbound cards in that particular game and forge them into NFTs um, by combining um, basically at the basic level of the game. If you collect two of the same card, you can combine the two by then burning a uh, essentially um, a currency or a token in, in the, that particular game to create the NFT version of the card. So it would be an interesting potentially uh, thing for Splinterlands to look at because let's say you earn two of the soulbound Pelicor bandits in the future, let's just say, um, version 2.0 of the, the Pelicor bandits soulbound. You know, what we all have said is there's not enough sinks in the game for things like vouchers specifically, right? There's voucher value is dropping precipitously. There's too many vouchers. There's not enough sinks. There's not enough utility for that. And what are vouchers? Well, vouchers are a representation of staked SPS, right? So there's um, <clears throat> there's that. But if you, for example, were to take two copies of a soulbound card, combine it with a voucher, and then all of a sudden now you have um, a NFT version of the card that you could trade, rent, delegate, sell, etc. You know, maybe that's a hybrid model that could slow the bots down, encourage them to either buy vouchers on the secondary market, inflating the prices there and having some value there, or encouraging bot farms not to sell SPS, but to stake SPS and earn vouchers so that they could then, you know, take the cards um, that they were earning on accounts and, and make NFTs out of them. Um, again, it's it's more of a gate or a throttling of reward cards instead of an outright removal, but it also helps the overall ecosystem for nodes and for vouchers in that case by having kind of this forge concept of taking soulbound cards and making them into NFTs over time. Yeah, I, I, I love those kinds of ideas. I love, I love the uh, uh, sort of the creative ways that we can we can we could try and figure that out because i mean really more than anything that's that's a big part of what we are you know what what we're trying to do and what we're trying to figure out uh as this like splinterlands ecosystem is 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 we are trying to to blend this world of like uh how do we take a a game that can be played for like a reasonable cost that that the average ish person might be able to invest in how do we take that where it's a fun game that somebody can play and how can we set it up so like the entire community gets to participate in the economy and the value of that and that like that's a like I, that's a, that's a novel concept that we're still trying to figure out right and so uh and, and within that world i mean like we've seen you know in the in the traditional gaming uh gaming world uh you know fortnite is is funded almost exclusively on cosmetics Right. And so, I mean, ba basically exclusively on cosmetics. Right. Uh, you know, with the combination of the uh, of the battle pass plus uh, different skins that people could buy uh, buy directly. Uh, and and yet they you know, it's a free to play game where people can get in and and play it well, play it effectively, uh, having spent nothing. Um, and, and yet it's, it's an incredibly popular game, right? So it's a, a, a free to play game. They make their money on the cosmetics. Anyway, all that is to say, when we look at Splinterlands, uh, what we're, what we're trying to do is we're trying to say, how do we, how do we create this game where it's fun, uh, where there's value to these assets, uh, and yet like they're digital, right? So there is no real, uh, scarcity. Uh, it, it's all, it's all the scarcity that we code into it. Right. Uh, cause we could, you know. Uh, just like shoot, just like we've seen with uh, with uh, chaos legion packs, right? Like we could print way way more than maybe we even need, uh, and uh, and and run into issues as a result of that. And so, yeah, I, like I think I think really again going back to one of my earlier points, uh, we are we are in the midst 
of uncovering the solutions to what I think are some really interesting uh, problems to solve. Uh, and yeah, so yeah, examples like you just said of, uh, you know, what, what can we do to, to make there be a mechanic where uh, somebody can earn their way into uh, producing a real world asset? Uh, I, think, I, I think that's awesome. I love that idea. Great. And, and I know we've been talking a lot about, you know, bot farms specifically, kind of the lower end of the spectrum of, of bots or automation. You know, one of the things that also we talked about at the beginning of this conversation is, you know, bots in tournaments or bots in brawls, sometimes at the highest levels of the game. And I know Archmage has um, had a stance specifically around tournaments, and I, I believe brawls as well. Can you talk about that? Has that changed recently with earnings in, let's say, brawls now? Or, um, you know, I guess talk about that topic in general. Yeah, so the the quick history of kind of our our stance when, when you know, when Archmage first launched, uh, so, and, and first and foremost, uh, everybody should understand Archmage has zero code written for tournaments, zero code written for brawls. So Archmage currently does nothing there, uh, can't do anything there. There are no ArcMage users who are using ArcMage to play tournaments or brawls. So uh, as a foundation, it should be, that should be understood. Uh, now looking at kind of the, the history of our stance on, on, this, on this stuff. So first off, when we were first getting started as kind of a, a general blanket statement where the team the team, uh, you know, had made it clear, hey, you know, hey, we've got this, uh, this, this sort of bot neutral stance, and so we're like, all right, cool. So bot neutral stance. Right now, uh, we know how to build something for ranked battles. You know, we can envision a future where, like, we set something up uh, to help people automate uh, their tournaments and brawls. So, uh, so yeah, like that. That's part of our plan for the future. It was kind of what we initially thought, and you know. So we, we got in, we got started, we got started building. Uh, and then uh, on a town hall, Weird Beard had, uh, had mentioned, uh, you know, hey, uh, I don't think bots should be in tournaments. And what we took that as was we took that as this is, you know, Weird Beard who is in charge of tournaments. Uh, this is the company official position that bots should not be in tournaments, right? And, uh, and so we, at that point, we're like, hey, we're trying to operate in good faith with the Splinterlands ecosystem. So Archmage will not be in tournaments. And that's, that's where, where our update came from, was that understanding. Uh, later, it became clear uh, through, uh, through comments and, and things that we saw uh, that, that Weird Beard had uh, responded to other people with uh, that were then shared with us that, that in terms of the actual you know, official rule from the, the company itself, uh, that 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 wasn't the case. That the that bots were allowed a, in in tournaments, uh, and that uh, I, I think if I recall at the time, it was specifically uh, either KYC or I, f I forget how it was worded. There were, there was some uh, specific subset where it's like you know they, they uh, I think it might it might even been like in person events or something. You know, bots wouldn't be allowed here, uh, and we're like, oh okay, well interesting. Okay, so that's so the so the the official position actually is is different. Okay, well, hey, that's uh, that's that's good to know. So, like, maybe we could offer something. Uh, and then uh, again, another update uh, kind of came out, and conversations came out where it was uh, uh, made clear where you know uh, Weird Beard's position has never changed, uh, which is which is fine. That I I, I don't specifically ever uh, ever thought that it did. Uh, that that he does not believe uh, that bots uh, make sense in in the tournament space, in the brawl space, uh, and at a basic principle. I think I completely agree uh, you know, that if if we can create an environment where where we can ensure that the people who are competing are humans, that there is obviously a good, valuable reason for that, right? Like there's a good space for that, that even though we exist in a world where uh, – uh, you know, where, where we can see uh, uh, computers starting to be able to do uh, better at some of these games uh, than, than, than humans. It, yeah, sure. It's not, it's not the most interesting thing in the world to sit and watch computers play each other. I completely agree with that. So if, if we have a good way to implement, uh, implement on that, where we can verify that, where we can, where we can set that up, uh, then I am all for it. Right now. And, I, and I, I would love nothing more than the, uh, you know, than the than the team, then uh, for the community, for us to figure out a good solution uh, that enables that, 
again, going back to that original philosophy, theoretically and hopefully with some sort of uh, you know decentralized solution for it. Ideally, that would be a truth in code sort of solution, but uh, maybe it doesn't even have to be that way. There's a an idea that uh, uh, Imposter had actually shared with uh, uh, with the team. I forget who he shared it with uh, specifically at this time uh, about how uh, how that could be handled essentially with like a uh, uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with how blacklists work on on Hive or you know, I, I forget if they're called blacklists on Hive or blocklists. Uh, either way, uh, but uh, uh, but basically it's the idea like you know you can uh, you can create these lists that that you know, essentially are saying like, hey, I don't I don't want to receive uh, posts from the this person uh, and other people can subscribe to that list. Right. They could they could subscribe to it so that they also would not see those posts. So if you add somebody, then they won't see it either. Right. So you could subscribe to those lists and make that part of your experience on Hive. Uh, essentially, he proposed like a similar idea for for tournaments to say, uh, at least for you know, the non Splinterlands tournaments, uh, you could pretty readily say, Hey, give the tournament creator, uh, the right to have their own, their own block list, right. Their own list of, uh, of people that they could say, Hey, you, you know, you can't play, uh, cause, uh, cause it's become fairly obvious that you seem to be uh botting when you do this. Uh, so this is a, this is an account that, uh, that won't be allowed in this tournament. Uh, and it doesn't solve the problem completely, but at least decentralizes it to a degree, uh, where it's not, 100 percent a top-down uh a top-down solution uh so i see something like that uh, potentially being you know it's uh, less less than perfect but uh maybe better than nothing uh as a uh, uh as a potential solution where where you know tournaments can have a space where people can at least sort of control um you know the 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 kinds of competition uh that that's going to be allowed and maybe it's uh, based on reputation uh partially uh as well as skill set right so uh that that could be uh, a way of implementing it uh but in, in in general so to go back to the question of like where archmage is on this at, at a basic level unless the splinterlands team is able to make sure that they are getting bots out of tournaments and brawls uh, you know, I, I just had this conversation earlier. The, the way I personally view it, and I don't know where, where Archmage will ultimately go on this, but the way I personally view it uh, is that in a world where Ultron exists, it, it's probably good <laughs> that we have Iron Man, right? That we have, that we have somebody that's, that, that, that is uh, equipped and powered up and able uh, to, to fight that at, on, on hopefully a bit more uh, equal footing than, than not. Uh, and so what what we would potentially implement, if we implement anything, and none of this is decided, it's all still up in the air, uh, would be more like a HUD, uh, you know, a heads up display where uh, where people get access to the data that we use in order to make decisions on what what hands to play. Uh, but a human would would still manually play uh, within that. There's a number of things that's actually uh, really advantageous for that. For one thing, uh, you know, automation is really not great at at like improving a hand right knowing where to stick the chicken knowing how to leverage fiends knowing uh, uh if you should put the the chicken or the fiend in there depending on if uh resurrect is is in play or if last stand is in play and all those kinds of things so the the you know the the currently uh the automations are not great at dealing with those and a human would be much better at that and much more adaptable to that so uh there's some there's some great benefits there uh and and so that that if we did anything would more likely be what would uh what would come out is something that equips humans uh to play at a higher level uh, rather than you know just uh, having more robots going in and sweeping sweeping tournaments with nobody ever actually playing each other. Uh, but again, none of that's decided, and a big part of the uh, where that would ultimately go has to do with uh like what 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 Splinterlands decides to do uh, if they decide to take an official position. Uh, you know, uh, some of that sort of thing. But uh, you know, philosophically on it, part of what I look at is, is I say, like, uh, Archmage as a project specifically, if, if Splinterlands asked us not to do something, we would almost definitely not do it, right? Like, if, if they said, hey, you know, can you not create a solution for, you know, for brawls or for tournaments or whatever? Can you not do that? And we probably would, right? Because, yep. again, we're going to act in good faith. And you've already already shown that from an ethical perspective, you know, when Weirdbeard said, you know, he didn't want essentially to see bots in tournaments, you change your stance from a company perspective or a project perspective. Um, so I think that that is interesting. Um, you know, just have a, well, just real quick, the the block list um, 
that you talked about on Hive. Yep. I will say that is a little bit of a slippery slope because we've seen what's happened with UA UA, Schnappoon, and, and Half Blue earlier this year, you know, and uh the tournament scene, you know, external the Splinterlands, but um, you know, a tournament scene nonetheless. And uh, you know, they were for those that aren't aware, they were, you know, um uh, essentially uh accused or i guess you know speculated to be bots and they were banned from an external tournament and they obviously were not bots so you know right. a block list is a little slippery of a slope but you know going back to your your point of the team having a stance communicating the stance and letting the community enforce it is interesting you're familiar with the um the book a scarlet letter correct i am i am yep so imagine if we had well a reverse Scarlet Letter and Splinterlands. If the team came out with a stance that says, hey, you know, it's maybe against terms of service or it's against the spirit of the game to run bots or automation in tournaments and brawls, including HUDs as an example. And we uh, want to make that clear. And maybe they have a, um, a guild badge for all guilds that if you agree with that sentiment and the guild is going to make sure that their members adhere to that sentiment, then the guild will get a, you know, um, a special badge on their, you know, guild details or about page saying that, Hey, we, we are bot free in brawls and tournaments for all of our guild members. And, um, you know, they, the, it would be on an honor system where you know they would apply to Splinter Lands and say, hey, you know, we we agree that any of our members will not use bots or automation and we will police that. And if we find out that they do, they'll be kicked out of the guild. And you know, the community or the guild leadership will hold them to that kind of standard. And then you would very quickly see, especially at the top levels of the game, again, this is kind of the reverse scarlet letter, is which guilds are uh, going along with the spirit of the game and the developers and which ones aren't and again it would be on the honor system but uh it would be a way that wouldn't require a heavy-handed application or enforcement but it would really be about the community saying hey this is what is right and this is what's acceptable there could there could be something to that i mean the the, the biggest thing that i you know uh, that i wrestle with in 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 this is you know, I talk. I, I've talked about this uh, uh, a fair bit in, in in other conversations. Of uh, rule rules are only rules in in the sense of like being useful or being valuable in so much as they can be enforced, right? And so you know, like like if you if you notice the 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 reality is if there if for instance, uh, you know, there's a there's a law that's never enforced, you will find very quickly that people break that law pretty consistently because they learn that it's not really a law. And, and as a result, uh, really the, the, for the most part, the people who end up being punished by it are the ones that are abiding by the law rather than, than anyone else. Right. Uh, and so I, I always wrestle with that. Right. And I've seen that at, in, in, in practice in a, a you know, a number of scenarios, both, uh, uh digitally and uh you know in 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 real life and so uh yeah there there does I, I like i think that's part of what what the team is wrestling with as well the splinterlands team is wrestling with is, is trying to figure out like how do we set up a system where we can make a rule that actually has you know some teeth to it some practical way that this gets implemented uh that that has real uh you know real impactful incentive uh and uh and and doesn't just reward the bad actors and punish the good actors right uh and uh and yeah so i mean like unfortunately i think the the reality is uh there there does not need to be many bad actors to still go in and sweep tournaments <laughs> you know it it like you know uh, you know they don't get they don't get the badge or or whatever unless that unless that impacts uh uh you know unless that impacts earnings or impacts something or like I, uh, like it, it, unless there's a unless there's a, something that feels like a tangible consequence uh for people uh then I, I like i wonder if that if that will matter or if it'll more so be a way for uh the people who do want to act in good faith uh like to feel good about the other people that are acting in good faith while <laughs> while while the ones that aren't uh are still you know getting a uh 
uh, an, an abnormal share of rewards or whatever, right? So, yeah. It's interesting because, you know, the, the concept of infamy or being a heel or a villain, you know, within a community is probably not necessarily a great thing. But, you know, again, if, if you have the community essentially, you know, have standards and, and let's say there's not a, there's, there's not teeth behind the um, enforcement of necessary, the, the terms of service or the Splinterlands team's stance on bots, but, you know, maybe, uh, Maybe there's a bounty system put in place by the community and built into the game where you could say, hey, you know, if you see this player in ranked battles or you see it in a tournament and you beat them, you know, the community maybe do donate some DEC or SPS to reward pool for basically discouraging the behavior of that, uh, you know, villain out there that is perceived I, I don't know i mean it's again if the team's not going to police it or enforce it or put teeth behind a stance then maybe it's up to the community to do so yeah yeah I, i'm and again like on, on on all of this more than anything that's the that's the thing that i find interesting about all this right so it like we we're we're wrestling with what i think are very interesting problems to wrestle with where it's 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 trying to solve this thing of like creating this economy for ourselves where we get to play this game where we get to have value in it uh and and trying to figure out the ways like where you know like uh, uh you know as at a as a at a basic uh basic philosophical level right like uh, uh you know I'm 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 out of the states uh and like part of part of you know the the basics of like our our constitution uh, is is the idea of like no cruel or unnecessary punishment when it comes to how the judicial system is is run, right? Like that's a foundational tenet of like how things should be done. Uh, and essentially, we get like we get to define where that line is of what's what's cruel or unusual, right? And you know, for better or worse, our societies I think have often uh, uh, made bad choices on that front where we have uh, done cruel and unusual punishment, and hopefully we learn from that and correct that. Uh, and, and anyway, so you know where that comes into into the game here is that that's essentially what we're wrestling with here, right? It's a basic, a basic question of as a as a community, like what are we comfortable with in terms of uh, uh in terms of how punishment works and how it's enacted, uh, and are we okay with innocent people being punished in pursuit of in pursuit of those that we believe are guilty? Right, because that, like that, you know, the example that you gave, uh, you gave earlier about, uh, uh, you know, the 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 folks who were accused of botting that weren't, uh, right? Like, there, if if we don't do this right, we will definitely have innocent people be punished, uh, for sake of uh, in trying to enforce a, uh, uh, uh you know, a a good, uh, a good moral, you know, uh, attempt, if that makes sense, um. And and essentially, like what we're wrestling here is it's a it's really a basic ethical philosophy here of of you know the 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 Splinterlands teams their 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 ethical position is that they 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 want to build a system that does not have uh, if at all possible the the consequence of an innocent person being pub, uh, punished. Uh, for for sake of trying to implement a policy, right, and and very specifically, uh, it, it seems mostly to be like a human decision, right? We don't want a human to decide to punish another human, if possible, uh, you know, it, in this in this vein. And it, it so like that's part of where they're drawing the li drawing the line of saying that would be uh, cruel and unusual punishment. And we're not willing to go there, so we have to have our have to have our teeth and have to have our judicial uh, you know system in Splinterlands uh, operate without a. Uh, without that kind of punishment and th and that's what they're trying to develop but uh anyway yeah I, so yeah I, if there's not really a point there it's just I, I i find it i find it all really fascinating i think uh you know for for, for being a, a member of a you know a, a bot uh a bot service team right uh Archmage, I, I like i would i would tell you i i more than anything i like i i just love the the thought experiment of this all of trying to figure out like can we create this thing that uh, that incentivizes humans uh, that are all spread all over the world. That essentially the only thing that we know about them is a, a digital signature uh, that they that they created through a series of other uh, other digital obstacles. Uh, can we create a system that that still 
uh, kind of has uh, what you would call proof of human, right? That uh, sure. Uh, that 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 there's proof of human there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's definitely an interesting dilemma, and I think we have you know two ends of the spectrum. You have one end of the spectrum, which is the wild, wild west, which anything goes, and there's no enforcement, and there's really no rules. And then you have more of the let's say authoritarian state, where you know it's heavy handed and it's very. Um, very strict and heavily enforced and you know there's definitely innocence that can suffer uh, under that type of um, uh, you know kind of enforcement policy Uh, right now i would say we're on the spectrum of the wild wild west and maybe there's a way to find a a more you know middle ground or happy medium that has you know some you know rules and and common decency right that's out there from a play perspective um that uh doesn't necessarily you know it it isn't the wild wild west so maybe we can get there you know how we get there as a community and as a game we'll have to see there definitely needs to be leadership from somewhere whether that leadership comes from the game and the development team or comes from the community and the dow we'll have to see but i think it's really an untenable state if it maintains to be the wild wild west because um, that's probably not a uh, sustainable um, state of the game. Yeah, yeah. I, I honestly, I, I, I think I'd agree. I think, I think we're, uh, we're, we're pushing toward and progressing into, uh, you know, what, what are the solutions that we all could come up with, right? What are, what are the ways that we can, uh, that we can make this happen? Where, uh, uh, where, it, like, you know, the same way, uh, you know, the, the basic history of, of where cryptocurrency comes from, right? Like there was. There is a bunch of attempts to try and figure out how do we make uh, digital currency where you, you know, you, you don't have the double spend problem, right? Uh, and then, you know, Bitcoin finally unlocks that with, with the proof of, uh, proof of work mechanism. Uh, and, uh, and then from there, like we've you know, got the proof of work, we've got the blockchain, and, then, and we've been building uh, concepts and technology off of that now since then. Uh, that you know to 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 create a lot of cool, interesting things, and uh, still unsolved is you know uh, I, you know again uh, for lack of a lack of a better term, what we would call the proof of a uh, proof of human, <laughs> right? That a that a good and consistent uh, way to do that, a, a, a proof of individual, right? Yeah, well, uh, we ha- we have that. I mean, it's account verification, but no one wants to talk about it, and and, and people, you know, um, I guess relate the term KYC to that, and we have. We have that in the game already today with tournaments and with uh, things like PayPal and verification and stuff like that. But um, you know, it's uh, it's it's a uh, a bad word in in crypto apparently. So we don't want to talk about that necessarily as a solution. But in reality, account verification does solve problems that exist today with the especially uh, especially the bot farmers as an example. So right, yeah, and, and fair enough. Again, I mean that that goes to. Uh, that that goes back to the uh, uh, the whole line of uh, of of drawing the the decision of of what's cruel and unusual punishment, right? Where, uh, <laughs> building a uh, building a you can't have game. it both ways. You can't have yeah. you can't have a one to one earning without account verification, and uh, so you either have it or you don't. So right, right. Because that uh, you mentioned that that was the the problem, right? The problem is proof of human uh, with right. with the game. So. Yeah, but but what's interesting is even like even even that even uh, even KYC right. Uh, so we do KYC. Uh, well, uh, now you got now you got individuals <laughs> still running software uh, to submit their battles. There's just not a bot farm, but you still have individuals leveraging software. Uh, so we haven't we haven't really solved the issue in terms of uh, proof of individual in the sense of like proof of this is a sentient human being making the decisions to field these teams. Uh, but we, I mean, like it, it, so it solves an aspect of it for sure, yep. uh, in terms of limiting it, but it, you know, w- what we're talking about as a, as an ecosystem is more than that. We're talking about, uh, kind of this idea of human on human competition, uh, and, and being able to do that. That's, that's the discussion, you know, coming into play with, uh, with tournaments and brawls. And even with KIC, we don't solve that. Yeah. Uh, but, well, it's winning uh, one battle at a time, right? You know, you have to move the ball forward slowly sometimes. And, and I think, you know, for the um, the human on human or esports particular aspect of it, well, the only probably way we get to that is, you know, live, live coverage of events, um, yeah, you know, and, right. and then, you know, if, we, if we're at that point of the game where there's 
sponsors and marketing and prize pools to support live sporting events on a regular basis, then we've won those other battles against, for example, bot farms and other things. And we've come far enough to get the value of the token in the economy to a spot where it makes it, you know, viable. But again, if we don't if we don't fight those smaller battles that exist today, we'll never get to the larger battles in the future. So and I agree. I mean, and, and and again, I mean, I think I think that's where that's where some of the some of the difference of uh, of opinion on this is, right? Because again, there there are plenty of uh, there are plenty of things that the team has done that are that are that are very obviously geared toward addressing bot farms and uh, making some of those decisions and and going in the, in the direction that they've said that they want to go. Uh, and so they're like, it, it's <laughs> you're like you're right. Like there is there is a tool that's available, which is. Uh, you know, make yourself known uh, as a uh, as a as a legal entity uh, within the uh, kind of the, the the traditional thing. And and you're right; they've they've basically said like, if we if we can at all avoid it, that is not the path that we want to go down. Uh, and they have been uh, pretty consistent about that, I think, too. So, uh, as a community, I think I think you're right. There is ultimately uh, the decision, the discussion of saying uh, what are we comfortable with, what uh, what what do, what do we want to do. I, and I think honestly, in terms of uh, uh, overall uh, staked weight voting. I'm not. I'm not sure which way it would go. I think a lot of uh, a lot of the SPS holders are probably probably leaning more toward the uh, the, the the crypto end of the spectrum uh, than maybe exclusively the gamer end of the spectrum. But I I, I don't know for sure. Um, but uh, but yeah. Anyway, I I, yeah. I I I think it's really interesting and uh, uh, you know more than anything. I do, I do. I hope we I hope we solve it in a way where where like we get to keep this cool thing that. Uh, uh, where we get to play a game and 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 earn money and uh, and and yet still somehow uh, still how somehow be able to do it in a in a way that doesn't uh, get corrupted like all the other systems seem to. But we'll see. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Absolutely. And the reason why you know I think this is an interesting conversation. Why I've been asking you a lot of these questions, Max, is because you're you know an interesting point, in, you know, in the economy or in the ecosystem here because of your you know, um, representation and, and um, alignment with Archmage here as a automation service. So getting your opinion on this is, you know, obviously it's your personal opinion that we're talking about here, but I think, you know, it's an interesting um, perspective because of your, you know, obviously your your stake kind of in the game here, so to speak. And speaking of Archmage, I know the we've, we've got a number of changes to the service that we should probably talk about and inform the community about if they're interested to hear and it's about you know a, a peak d post which i'll link here in the video description here on peak d that talks about billing rates and other updates for archmage the service and maybe you can talk through some of that for us and, and kind of give the the community the um, the heads up here and what's going going on and, and why they might want to pay attention yeah absolutely so uh you know about at this point uh, i think it was about a month and a half ago uh, from from when we're recording this, uh, Archmage uh, released what we what I would call like our first iteration of our, of our billing system. So up to that point, uh, we uh, we launched tokens, we had our alpha, our beta, uh, and then we had a, a pre-release of uh, of standard tokens where folks got to come in, got to use the service, uh, and there was no cost other than the cost of a of the token that they either uh, bought directly from us, uh, you know, from a partnership with uh, with Splex. Uh, or uh, on the secondary market based on whatever uh, whatever the, the the market was pricing them at the time, and that was the only cost at the time. And then we implemented the uh, the fees. Uh, that was always the plan. It was in our white paper uh, right from the beginning that we had those uh, you know had fees in mind. Uh, when we actually implemented them, the way that we implemented them was by leveraging uh, the Splinterlands rewards delegation system. So uh, you know the biggest benefit of that is that it made it so that we could roll out quickly. We could uh, you know take in fees to be able to run the service at a sustainable level. The, the token sales were never intended to be what sustained uh, Archmage as a project. They were really there as a limiting factor to make sure uh, that we only took on as many users as we could actually, uh, you know, reasonably service, so that we could so that we could control scaling and didn't scale too quick, where uh, you know we onboarded too many users and we couldn't handle it, right? So we could control the rate at which we scaled. Uh, anyway, so we we launched our first our first run at billing, and and it, it had some problems with it. So, uh, so you know, first and foremost, the the the, you know, the the biggest problem. Well, before I even talk about problems, so uh, our the way that we launched billing was we we launched it with a price point that was to the upper end of what we thought uh, 
we might need in order to be sustainable as a project, right? So it's the upper end of what we thought might we might need specifically so that we could lower the price rather than raise it after launching it, right? So that, that was why we launched the way that we did when we did and the pricing that we did. Uh, and a lot of people were skeptical about whether or not we were going to do that. The you know, proof is in the pudding. We have lowered our fees. So we did exactly what we set out, <laughs> what we said we would do. Uh, uh, but in, in terms of some of the problems that the uh, original system had, uh, you know, in our discussion here today, we've tossed, talked a lot about how the reality of, of Splinterlands, uh, for better or worse, bots or not, the reality of Splinterlands existing uh, is that humans want to own the assets and want to be involved in this ecosystem, in this game, in some way, form, or fashion. If that doesn't exist, then the economy of Splinterlands goes away, right? In so much as humans want to be involved, want to play, uh, then that like that's where the value essentially comes from right so that that's 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 what what props up the value of splinterlands is the value of uh of being able to play the game and and having a having a community of people that want uh to put their money in to play the game or to at least hold the assets okay uh and so we completely uh you know agree that the you know it tends to be uh, humans are the ones that uh, uh, that spend money, and so if you want to uh, if you want to attract humans, it's it's good uh, to be able to have uh, actual real humans if possible. And so our system, uh, when we first started, was was really well set up for a wide variety of people. For you know the people that got too busy for a long period of time, for people who uh, maybe they uh, played Splinterlands most of the time. Uh, but they wanted to make sure that their ECR never got to 100%, so that they're you know making sure that they're fully maximizing their ECR and and leveraging it, and and it was really useful for a wide variety of use cases. Uh, as soon as we rolled out billing the way that we had it, it it really put a a big block on one key use case to me, which was uh, what I would call the mixed play player. Okay, so the person who isn't trying to automate anything, uh, or not not any isn't trying to automate everything rather um but but wants a mix right R wants to have the help to make sure battles are happening when they're too busy but really still wants to be able to play the game at at times as well uh, and there's a lot like a very wide variety of of the extent of of what happens there and so uh in our update we were able to solve uh not only that that problem but another problem as well, uh, which it, you know I don't actually believe is necessarily a massive problem, uh, but it is it it is something that bothered users, which was uh, the idea of having to share a percentage of of the very rare, uh, but what do happen jackpot you know SPS rewards, right? So uh, uh, our update does not solve that completely, uh, but it does help it drastically. And so what we did uh, when when we first launched building, we had uh, users paid uh, a percentage. Of their of their staked SPS earnings, so uh, not everything, just the staked SPS earnings, uh, and those earnings from battle rewards, daily focus chests, and season chests. So that's where those were paid out of. So any staked SPS that you earned through the game, because again, SPS is paid staked at this point. Uh, you you pay you know you you were paying a percentage of that uh, to Archmage, and that was essentially what paid for you to uh, to run the service, uh, and. You know, there's there's a lot of benefits to that. There's a lot of great things about it. But the again, the biggest thing that that uh, that we saw, you know, cause a problem is that uh, for the, you know, a player who say uh, only needed to use the service for a day or two uh, in a season, uh, you know, where where do we draw the line of of where you know uh, what what percentage of the season chest rewards could we do? Because as a service. Uh, it, it's essentially uh, complicated to try and code uh, a, a solution where we uh, adjust that percentage. And then because the way the system works, it requires an active key uh, for, for folks to update it. So even if we j did update the percentage, they would still have to come in and update it. And it really, it would be a clunky thing if we were changing it too much. And so uh, what we came up with was a way to simultaneously lower fees, uh, lower fees to the extent that across the board, uh, our fees dropped by about 15% uh, on average for our users. Uh, in some cases, that's higher. In some cases, that's lower, depending on uh, on what league. Uh, we are also able to make it so that approximately about 50% of the of of those uh, jackpot chests that you might earn. Uh, that that they are no longer subject uh, to uh, to the rewards delegation, and not only that, uh, the chests that uh, that are subject to uh, to rewards delegation are generally uh, comparatively the lower earning 
uh, chest that a, that a player gets. So uh, we, we, we gave up the, uh, the chests that have the highest chance of the highest earnings, and we kept uh, the ones that have the, you know, the, the lower chance. Uh, and then finally, uh, the change that we made made it so that now uh, players can very readily hop on, hop off of using Archmage day over day. Uh, so you can play for a day, uh, play for a couple of days, play for a couple of weeks. Uh, using Archmage, uh, you know, when you get busy and you need the extra help, because what we did is we got rid of season chests. So no longer uh, do our users have to delegate anything from their season chests. Season chests are are entirely uh, their own now. So now, in order to use Archmage, you uh, you simply need a token, uh, which again you could either acquire from the secondary market on on Hive Engine. Uh, you need a token, and then you need to set. Uh, rewards delegation up for ranked battle rewards and daily focus chests on staked SPS earnings only. So we don't charge for cards. We don't charge for packs. We don't charge for merits, potions, leaderboard prizes, uh, and then also things that we have no uh, connection to helping you earn. Uh, we don't charge for SPS on brawls, licenses, uh, or pack bonuses and, and that kind of thing. Like, you know, when you hold nightmare packs, we don't charge anything for uh, the the SPS that you earn from that, uh, so only on the uh, on the daily focus chests and the uh, and the battle rewards and uh, uh, and yeah, so that's that's the update again. Uh, you know what what we found is that that's about a fifteen percent drop for users, but uh, really for me the biggest benefit is it is it lets us serve uh, a group of user uh, that while honestly is not the most lucrative for us as a project right the uh, the the players that are doing that mixed play scenario it, they aren't going to be our highest earning users if that makes sense they're not the ones that make the most money uh for the project but uh they they really are an important aspect to us in terms of the splinterlands uh you know uh community economy uh, itself of of being able to help say hey you know we understand that you a player uh you know, need need help every now and again, and that uh, you still love the game, you still want to play, you still want to be able to leverage your assets, and you don't just want to, you know, say put them on the rental market and then kind of check out of the game. You want to uh, you want to be able to play brawls, you want to be able to play tournaments, you want to be able to hop into the occasional game, or you want to be able to play some days and not have to, uh, you know, grind every day. Uh, and so now we're able to again because you know uh, those season chests aren't a factor. So and hop out day by day and uh. Uh, and 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 the system works. We're still able to uh, uh, collect enough that we need to to be sustainable as a project and able to serve a uh, a wider variety of uh, of users, which is a uh, which is really exciting. And so uh, so that and then the other the other uh, key announcement uh, is that the uh, the token price itself uh, for the next time that we release retail tokens officially goes down to twenty dollars a token. Uh, we had them at twenty five dollars during a pre launch in order to account for the fact that we weren't uh, charging for rewards fees. Uh, we had announced this literally when we first announced that uh, that this would be coming, but we we officially rolled uh, rolled out that announcement so that people could be aware. So uh, if you want to get involved with uh, with Archmage, uh, the retail price when we release those, which will probably be coming soon, uh, is uh, is about twenty bucks. And then otherwise, uh, uh, yeah, you uh, delegate a percentage of your uh, battle rewards, your ranked battle rewards of uh, SPS and your uh, daily focus chest SPS and. Uh, and yeah, those uh, those fees de depend on which token you hold. Uh, Alpha Pass holders only uh, only delegate 15% of that staked SPS. Uh, beta Pass holders only delegate 25% of that staked SPS. Uh, and Standard Pass delegate 35% uh, of that staked SPS. Again, on ranked battle rewards and daily focus chests. So uh, in effect, uh, when I've ran the math, that seems to work out to be somewhere around... For, for a Diamond account, I've seen it be about... Uh, you know, 12% down to 12% uh, uh, of your total earnings uh, uh, at uh, uh, with a standard pass uh, down down to I think it was like four or five percent when I just ran the math today uh, for uh, for an alpha pass. So uh, in terms of total earnings, that's kind of what that what that percentage looks like. But uh, uh, but how we factor the math is off the staked SPS. Great. Well, well, thanks for that update, Max. And it sounds like. You know the the TLDR for those that are have a token or are using Archmage today is that you know the the cost or the um, um, the well I guess the cost of the service is going to go down because well the end of season reward chests are no longer in play for the SPS delegated rewards so definitely seems like an improvement and sounds like the team has been listening to the community and the feedback um, on the fees. And that's uh, good news, I think. So 
well, thank you. Yeah, we uh, uh, we we were we were excited to be able to come up with a solution because, uh, like, really the, uh, the 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 juggling act here is trying to figure out, uh, you know, like uh, we we got a, we got a smallish team of people that uh, are trying to you know juggle the combination of. Uh, you know, none of these things exist in a vacuum. If, if we want to roll out a, a, a billing feature, a feature for the bot, a feature for anything, uh, you know, it's got like somebody's got to code it. Somebody's got to make it happen. And uh, and so some of these decisions really resolve, revolve around what's a what's a way that we could, you know, leverage uh, what exists already as best as possible and still serve uh, the people that we uh, that we want to serve, uh, you know, effectively uh and uh and and try and maximize the value that we're generating compared to uh you know uh, just coding billing systems right which isn't which isn't what anybody's really wanting so uh th this we we're pretty excited that this uh this this change really opened uh opened up the service to a, a group of people that uh while uh it may not be our biggest earners were definitely a uh, a big part of like <laughs> uh in in our hearts if that makes sense and then at the same time Everybody gets the uh, gets the benefit of uh, of of those uh, those 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 lowered fees across the board. So uh, I think it was a it was a win for all, and we were we were excited to to be able to to figure out a good solution for it. Yep. And just to clarify for for the the individuals that you were mentioning, as far as the change kind of helping is, um, even if they use let's say Archmage on day one and then play you know manually the account on days two and days three. Um, Archmage will still take percentages of those daily focus chests and daily SPS uh, for all three days, but overall the the general take will be less over the course of the season. Is that is that generally the gist there? Actually, no, no. So it, it will require you know if if you want to play manually, uh, then you will go in and you want you want to remove those delegations. Uh, okay, so you have to the okay playing manually. Yep. Gotcha. So it, there, 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 you know, there isn't a way for us to automatically, uh, like, there, there's not a way, as far as I'm aware, for us to not uh, receive a delegation. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yep. Uh, and, and so the the delegation is done on on the side of the uh, of the user sending, uh, rather than the user receiving. Uh, and uh, and so so yeah, uh, in in terms of how it works in practice. Uh, our expected behavior is that if you are a user that's that's hopping in and out of using Archmage, uh, you're playing one day, you're not playing the next. We expect that you will, you know, that that, that you'll turn off the delegation uh, on the days that you're not playing, and uh, and that's expected behavior at this point. So uh, so yeah, you only pay, uh, you you only should be paying for the days that you are actively playing. So Perfect. not just not or, uh, or that that you're actively using the service rather to be clear uh so uh not just the uh the season the season chess but any days that uh that you're not using the service and you're playing manually uh we are not expecting to see re, you know receive anything for it so uh, gotcha that's the way that that works that makes sense so then basically as a user in that scenario is when you want to play manually just go into your archmage config which i have the screen up on here now and just uh disable the um the uh with through key changes the delegation for those rewards basically and then when yep. you want to use archmage again just turn them back on so it's a manual process but at least gives you as the player the option to control that then exactly exactly and you literally you could do it as simply as that so uh you don't even have to disable the bot you can literally just uh remove those delegations the way that our the way that our service is set up is that the bot won't play unless those delegations are active so whenever you don't want it playing for you uh, and therefore don't want to be paying anything, remove the delegation whenever you want it playing, make sure the delegation is on. Gotcha. Uh, and, and then that way, that way you can keep it simple. So, uh, uh, it, it, it is important to note again, disabling the bot does not disable those delegations. So if you, if you want to not be paying those delegations, you have to actively remove those. Mm -hmm. Uh, unfortunately that's something we can't do on your behalf. So, uh, that is the, the proper use is to remove the delegation, uh, in order to, uh, make sure that those, that that happens. Gotcha. Is there a, a plan to create like a how to video or a, a, a secondary peak, uh, posting talking about that specific process, just so people are aware of kind of the expectations and how to, you know, maximize the, uh, the changes. You know, we haven't created something like that yet, but, uh, that, that sounds like a great plan. I have, a. Uh... I have made uh, config videos in the past, and I think that uh, that warrants an updated config video just to explain that that process. That any day that uh, somebody is not wanting to 
uh, leverage the service that uh, disabling the, the the delegation is is how they would want to do that. So that, okay. that's a great suggestion. I should definitely uh, I should definitely create a video for that. Yeah, it might be might be beneficial for the um, Archmage users only because the the peak D post while it talks about the the details, it doesn't necessarily spell that specific detail out. So it could get lost um, by a user not really understanding the implications. So. Yep that that makes sense. That makes sense. Fair fair feedback. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, great. Well, I know we've been going here for a little bit here, Max, and I want to be, um, you know, respective of your time here on this late evening. So, you know, is there any, any messages that you want to close out today with any links you'd like to share any, um, any closing points or any messages? Uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, just overall, uh, I, 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 you know, I appreciate the opportunity to come on and, uh, and talk about this stuff. I, uh, you know, I really, I, I enjoy, I enjoy these, uh, conversations, this process and, uh, sort of wrestling through this with everybody. I think, uh, you know, as, as much as people are passionate about this, hopefully, uh, hopefully people are open-minded enough to at least understand that there's, uh, there's, there's a variety of opinions, uh, <laughs> that exist on this and, uh, and it's worthwhile to try and sort through them. Uh, and, uh, and, and kind of see where we come out on it. And, and honestly, there's a, there's some level of, uh, of humility in this, right. That, uh, that acknowledging that we all have blind spots and, uh, uh, and that the way that we, that we see something going, the way that we think it might be happening that very often, uh, I'm sure we can all, uh, see the times that we've been wrong in the past about something. Uh, and, uh, and, and both on my end, uh, in terms of where I think things may go and, uh, the general community where, uh, where, where folks think things might go, I, I, you know, the reality is we don't know the future and we're kind of all figuring this out as we go. So, uh, I, I guess I'd, uh, I'd extend, um, a, uh, a, a, a plea for folks to, uh, to engage in, uh, in, in useful, uh, discord that is, uh, uh, you know, kind, uh, rather than, uh, you know, heated or vengeful, which, uh, or, you know, the, the general, uh, internet term of salty, uh, <laughs> cause, uh, cause I think it's useful for us to have these discussions for sure. Uh, and know that we're really all, we're all, uh, maybe not all of us, but I think most of us are trying to head toward the same thing, right? We, we love this game. We love this, th this thing. And we, we want it to be great. We want it to be awesome. And we, uh, we're, we're trying to head there maybe in different directions, but, uh, that, that's, that's what we're heading toward. And so, uh, if, if, folks like uh the the general direction of uh you know the the concept of being able to leverage automation and be able to uh make sure that their that their assets are going to work uh for them even when they're too busy to play themselves and still want to be connected to the game and maybe a a slightly different way than than having to grind it out all the time i definitely recommend that folks check out what we're up to at archmage uh you can find our website at archmage.app uh that's a r c h m a g e dot a p p uh, from there, you can find our Discord. We have a very active Discord with uh, lots of conversations. Uh, the myself as well as the uh, uh, the main dev team are very active in there, answering questions and chatting with our community. Uh, so feel free to come in and uh, and talk to us, even if uh, even if you disagree with what we're up to. We uh, we would uh, we would welcome uh, uh, you know some discussion there. So uh, and then we also uh, uh, often put out information uh, on Hive. Uh, you could check out uh, our our official updates at arcmage.app is the uh, is the Hive account, or you could check out our more uh, opinion slash helpful topics and and that kind of thing at arcmage.courier uh, on Hive. And uh, uh, some of the kind of stuff that we put out there is things like uh, uh, in the past we put out you know recommendations for cards that we're seeing winning, uh, strategies for you know for for maximizing ECR and and things like that. So we we try and leverage. Uh, uh, our position in the uh, in the Splinter Lands ecosystem, not just to lift up uh, our own users themselves, but also the uh, the general community. Because again, you know, we love we love this game. We love what what it's up to, and uh, and we want to be an asset in the community, uh, not a you know not not an extraction. So we hope to enable and uplift real players uh, to uh, you know to to get get a you know get to get some fun out of the game. Get uh, make sure that their assets are uh, going to work for them, uh, but be able to do that in a it with, with a bit of automation in the process. Perfect. Well, thank you, Max, for joining us. I'll be sure to include all of those links in the video description here so that everyone can access those easily. Appreciate your time, and uh, until next time, keep stacking those stats.